And we are back. Wynn has the ball after the change of ends. And he's going to be hitting the backfield, and he's going to be sacked. Ross took the snap, and he didn't have but about two seconds, and he was maybe even one second, and he was hitting the backfield. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. Uh, it looks like our O-line really did cover all that well. And so that will make it third and 13 for the Yellow Jackets. And he takes the snap, looking down the field, throws a quick screen over to Zach, who makes a man miss, gets around the outside, and he's going to gain about five, but it will be short of the first down. It will be fourth and seven for the Yellow Jackets. That looks like Zach tried one of PA's moves on PA. You know, he did that little, well, let me stop a little and <laughs> juke you, make, he fall, make you fall, and then you can finally tackle me in the end. <laughs> and then I'll let you <laughs> And they're going to go for it right here on fourth and seven. And they're getting a play call in from the sidelines. I need to call timeout. And he takes the snap looking down the field. He needs to throw it. He threw it real fast. That's going to be Zach Morris wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. opposite end of the field where he had no defenders on him and he ran in for the touchdown. That might just be their sidelines <laughs> or their uh, fourth down needing a touchdown thing. <laughs> oh wow. And here is oh. Bo to attempt the extra point held by Paxton. Here's the snap. It's a good snap. It's a good hold. The kick is up and it splits it straight down the middle. That will make it 14-14 with 10 minutes and 31 seconds left in the second quarter. Hey, that was the it was we scored yep. 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Oh, I, will. I will take that. That'll tie up the football game, though. And here comes the win Yellow Jackets out onto the field to kick off. And Bo coming up to the 40-yard line to get the ball from the ref to place it on the tee. He is ready. And Bo is getting the play call in from Coach Hill. I don't know if, he, if anybody's noticed it all year or not, but every time they come out to the field, Coach Hill calls it from the sidelines, what he wants them to do. It's not just Bo picks it, but Coach Hill calls it before he even puts it on the tee. Oh, yeah, I didn't figure Coach Hill would let him be in that much of control. <laughs> Of his legs, and I think that's <laughs> enough, enough power. control that yeah. Bo can have. And here comes Bo kicking it off. He again is going to kick it deep. It's going to be taken at the 21. It's going to be dropped. He goes backwards trying to get around the outside, and he will be. Oh, he's going to break free, and they're going to blow it dead. They're going to say his knee hit the ground at the 26. I, like, I thought he kind of. Uh, I thought he fell. <laughs> it looked like he got back up. We don't have a happy Blasky fans here. Oh no, but we have some happy win fans. <laughs> you know, I think 14-14 would be a good score to go into the half with. Aye. Or 21 14 in us. Yeah. With us in the lead, <laughs> it'd be fine. With them in the lead, not so much. As much as both these offenses score, I highly doubt we're going to halftime 14-14. With, with 10 minutes left. But then you got to think about each team's defense, too. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. And he takes the snap, rolling to his right. He has a man wide open down the field, and he is going to be tackled by number three, Zach Morris, after a gain of 23. Quarterback throws the ball. I'm just I like, think. Oh. white shirt, white pants, catch it. <laughs> We're still playing soft. He had nobody within five yards of him. And see, just like this player right here. 
our corners are playing way off their, their outside receivers. And so he's able to run about four yards on the field and stop, turn around, and he's wide open. What is the advantage of that? Playing soft. Yes. They can't – it makes it a lot harder to run deep routes. So they can't run just straight down the field past our corners. And he takes the snap looking down the field. He has a man open again over on the sidelines. And he is going to be hit after a gain of about 13 first down Bruins. So do they spot, I just have a question, do they spot the ball where he's tackled or where he catches the ball? Wherever the first contact of the person is, whenever they start pulling him backwards, wherever they made first contact of him is where they spot the ball. Okay. So even if you throw him five yards backwards, he's still where they first made contact with him. Yeah, because I see Zach kind of, you know, throw him back. And he takes the snap. Again, they run a shuffle pass. And he's going to try and get around the outside. He's going to gain about three on the play. And that will make it second and seven for the Bruins. But he is taken down by number 50, Trevor. Sunshine Greer, 23, Marcus Northern. And I can't read that number. Yeah, I was talking to Sunshine and Civics. He said if we win, he's going to cut his hair. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Wait, I don't think he'll be call him Sunshine. Sun yeah, he won't be Sunshine anymore. I have to call him Trevor. <laughs> and here they come out in a shotgun formation, take the snap. Looking down the field, and he is, he just threw it up in the air. The pass was intended. Exactly. Looks like oh. for, I can't tell who the pass was intended for. Number 10. Oh, yeah. I didn't, you know, I've seen all white jerseys down there. I really, I didn't see a, a Pulaski player down there, you know, trying to catch the ball. I was really hoping Zach would get the ball. It was but, like right uh, here. Yeah, number uh, 57, Roy Lyke, and number 21, Nick Flack. They pressured the quarterback. And so it'll be third and seven for the Bruins. He takes the snap, looking down the field, and he finds a man open who's going to be hit at the first down marker and fall forward for a gain of 10 first down Bruins. But again, that time right there, we didn't have enough pressure on the quarterback, so we had plenty of time to sit back there and find a, a hole in the zone that we are running, and they get the first down. Be first down and 10 for the Bruins. He fakes the QB draw, and he's going to be hit in the back for a loss of eight. Great sack by number 24, DeAndre McGill. <laughs> you know, he got up after that. He was just nodding his head at the fans like, you yeah. You know when you do well. Yeah, I, I know, you know. Like whenever you hear the quarterback kind of choking for air, yeah, yeah that's a good sign. That's a good sign. <laughs> Great job, DeAndre. <laughs> and they got him lined up in a shotgun formation, five wide, takes the snap, looking down the field. Got a man wide open. And they are looking for uh, a pass interference call, but they didn't get it. Well, it wasn't pass interference. He wasn't touching him. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> you can see. I don't know if you can see the instant well, replay the or not. didn't see it, so yeah. we're fine. <laughs> Oh, and you hear a lot of boos from Pulaski Academy, um, you know. But a lot of from in, the, in any game, you can't see everything. I'm yeah. sorry. You don't see everything. Like, they got a good spot, so we didn't get a pass interference <laughs> call. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Everything equals out in the, most of the time. And again, they're going to throw the same thing. Oh, He's going to be picked up with number, number, number three, Zach. And he has blockers. And he has blockers. And he's, he's being running. chased, he's and he's going to make a man miss. He's at the and it's going to be returned 97 and yards for a pick six. Yellow Touchdown, Jackets. Yellow Jackets. He picked that ball off at the three yard line, and he had blockers in front of him. That was fantastic. That, oh, Zach is just laying on the ground now. I think he, wait, I think Zach might be hurt. I think he just has no air. He doesn't have any air? No, they're calling medics over. Oh, no. Wait a minute, let's see if we see anything. And he made him miss right there. 
He just he fell when he got into the end zone. He might just be exhausted. Yeah. He, I, I, he, I mean, running as hard as you can for 97 yards. Without stopping, breathing as hard as you can, trying to get away from defenders. He, I would be tired too. I'd be exhausted. I can't also, run 10 yards. He also plays both ways, so he's tired anyway. He's, he's probably is just completely worn out. Do you blame him, though? No, I don't blame him at all. Not at all. He and plays. he's up and he's fine. I think he's just a little bit tired. Maybe Zach just needed water. He's not used to doing that. You know, oh, that's the first time I've seen that from win. 97 yards, incredible run by Zach Morris. I'm sure that he just needs to take a breather, of course. And... So they're going to take the pick six away. There was ho there was holding, and there was also sideline interference. I'm not quite sure where the sideline interference came from. Sideline interference? Yes. There was sideline interference. So that's going to take the ball all the way back down to the win 13-yard line. So... Can you explain that to me? You know, um, I don't understand what just happened. Th there was holding against – after we uh, got the interception, one of our players was holding down the field. So that automatically brings the touchdown back to wherever the spot of the holding was, minus 10 yards. Yeah. But it'll be our football, right? Yeah, it, st it still okay, is our football because okay. they both happened after the interception. And now there's going to be a timeout win. Seven minutes and 70, oh, excuse me. Seven minutes and 25 seconds left in the first half of this football game. But then, I don't, um, I don't know where the silent interference came from. I don't know why they threw that, or maybe one, maybe some of our players ran onto the field afterwards, or. Or during, because. Yeah, or during, yeah. They're just as excited as we were up here while we were screaming oh, and, yeah. and yelling, because that was just, you know. That was incredible. an amazing play. So, um. You know, maybe offense can do that. Another 97-yard 97, 97 run. I'm, I'm, just think, I'm just hoping Zach's all right. You know, he's a very intricate part of our offense and defense. Uh, I, can, I can see him from here, Tristan, and it looks like um, our trainer, Octavia, has given him water. So I'm sure that that's all was wrong with him, that he was just absolutely – Tired. Hey. a little hard. <laughs> Whatever you give it, you're everything on the field. And he, Ross takes a snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and goes forward for a gain of a, about three on the play. That will make it second and seven. I can see Zach from here. Octavia is taping his ankle up. Well, he usually has tape on it every Sunday night, doesn't he? Yeah, ever since uh, last season at Hope, uh, you know, when he hurt his ankle real bad, you know, Zach, you know, he's just that type of player, you know, just in case. You certainly don't want to risk anything, not in your senior year safe. Uh. And Ross threw the ball to number six, Sam Wilson, threw a little bit behind him. He tried to turn around and catch it, but he was not able to hang on to it. So that will make it third and eight for the Yellow Jackets. I bet mean, Zach's kind of mad. I mean, he gave up all that energy. <laughs> all that work, guys. All that work. And y'all are going to run off the <laughs> sidelines. Ross takes the snap, rolling to his right, and he is going to be hit in the backfield for a loss of six. That will make it fourth down for the Yellow Jackets. That looks like that kind of hurt Ross. And I'm kind of – I'm interested to see – who they bring onto the field right here to punt? Because Zach is still on the sidelines. They send out number 70, the backup punter, Derek Botham. Excuse me, I really thought that was Paxton Mills. <laughs> I was like, they're back so long and tied. <laughs> I was wondering why Paxton was punting. <laughs> Excuse me.
Here's the snap, it's a good snap. And here's the punt by Derrick, here's a good punt. It goes all the way down to the 50 and rolls past the 50 all the way down to the Bruin 46 and a half yard line. That was a great punt by number 70, Derek Wilder, who's also a senior in high school. And a defensive player, a starter. Six minutes, 13 seconds left in the first half of the game. Score is still 14-14, tied. And here comes the Plassey Academy offense back out onto the field, trying to make up for that interception from earlier in the quarter. Looks like number three, Zach Morris, is back in the game. Oh, he's ready now. He's looking to do it all over again. And here is a quick pass over number 15, who is going to go forward for a gain of about 13 for a first down Bruins. It's like our boys aren't wrapping up anymore, or they hesitate to tackle. It looks like uh, they had number 50, Trevor Grit, as a defensive back on that play. Well, he's, he's been doing well lately. And he takes the snap, rolling to his right, looking down the field, throws a little dump pass number. Um, Once again, putting pressure on the quarterback, causes him to make quick passes, and then the guy isn't ready, and so he drops the ball. That was intended for number 39. Yeah, that was great uh, by number 50, because uh, he was coming for it, uh, their quarterback. Exactly. So that will make it second and 10. Five minutes and 51 seconds left in the first half. Uh, score still 14-14. And here's the snap. Hands off again to number 15, who's going to be hit after a gain of about five. That will make it third and five for the Yellow Jackets. Excuse me. It was third and five for the Bruins. But again, as they've been doing the whole game, they're going for it on fourth down, so you got to stop them for two more downs. It's, not four, it's, not four it's, down. it's, it's third down, but you got to stop them for two more oh, downs. Because yeah. they're not going to kick a field goal or punt. And he takes the snap, looking down the field, being rushed. And he has a man wide open in the end zone for a touchdown Bruins. He was wide open. I don't know whose man that was, but he was wide open. I seen uh, number four, Jay Leon, coming from the opposite side of the field to, uh, you know, try to stop that play. But, you know, number 10 was ahead. He was way ahead. And the kick is up, and it is good. So that will make it 21-14, to Pulaski Academy. with the score 21 14 PA up with five minutes and nine seconds left in the first half. And my prediction is, is that we uh, go into the second half tied at 21 21. I hope you're right because I'd like to not be down at half. You know, when you're tied, it, to me, it's like saying a new game 0 0. Nothing but a couple of good sticks. <laughs> It's like our big one thing we need to do right here is not only do we need to score, we also need to take time off the clock and not exactly. give PA another chance to get the ball at the end of the first half because we do get the ball at the beginning of the second half. The first thing we have to do is recover this onside kick that we know is coming. And here's the onside kick. And it will fall out of bounds at the 44-yard line. And so Wynn will take over at their own 44. We're, we're laughing. We're sorry if you heard the man. I mean, he's so generous up here. He gave us Velcro to keep our blankets around each other. 
And poor little Tristan is just shaking. <laughs> And so after the penalty, Wynn will take over at their own 44. He sends number three, Zach Morrison, motion, throws a quick screen, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. And after the play, they're getting the play call in from the sidelines. It'll be second 10 after the incomplete pass. He takes the snap, looking down the field, throws a quick screen over to Zach Morris, who gets behind his blockers, tries to get around the outside, but cannot, but he still gains about eight on the play. And so it'll be third and one for the Yellow Jackets. And he, Ross takes the snap and he falls forward for first down Yellow Jackets. He gains two on the play. This very nice man from Channel 17, or from Channel 7, gave me this really big, big thing of Velcro and is able to keep my blanket around me. And that's, <laughs> it's really great because we're up on the film deck. In the middle. And it's up and it's really cold because there's no wind block. And so we're just standing here on a platform. That was a false start against the offense, and that will be a five-yard penalty. On that play, every single person moved except for Hunter. Excuse me, except for Bryce. Bryce at the center now, I forget. Yeah, Bryce uh, is now at center. Every single person moved except for him. Last year, Hunter Davis was our was our center. Um, but this year, it is uh, Bryce Melton. Hunter Davis has moved to take Jake Snyder's place uh, at left tackle from last year. So this will now be second and 15 for the Yellow Jackets. Ross trying to make them jump. He does not. So they. And Ross takes the snap and throws it to number 27, Devontae Pounds, who gets forward for a gain of 10, making it third and four. Third and four for the Yellow Jacket. He takes the snap and he's going to be hitting the backfield for a loss of six on the play. That will make it fourth and one. You know, when Ross gets sacked, it's not really his fault. Uh, it's, you know, secondary. Just have to contain and keep him protected. And so. Here comes Derek out onto the field to punt. Going to try and pin them down inside their own 20. And here's the snap by Bryce. The good snap. Here's the punt. It is a good punt. It's going to bounce at the 24 and roll down all the way inside the 15. It's still rolling. And it's going to go all the way down to the 10-yard line. Great punt by Derek. Three minutes and 12 seconds left in the first half of this football game. We have to stop them right here. We can't go um, into halftime down by two. Touchdowns. That's, I, I mean, I figure they wouldn't think that – I figure the listeners at home wouldn't think that they can somehow score two points. This isn't basketball. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of tickled me. I don't know why. And here's the snap. He's going to roll to his right looking for a man. Again, he's got a man wide open down short, and he's going to go out of bounds to the 21-yard line. I was really hoping.
up at number 24, DeAndre McGill would kind of jump up and intercept that pass. And then just run it in. Oh, he's did it before. Yeah, he's certainly. And here they come again, lined up in a shotgun formation. He's got, and he drops back the pass, looking for short. And it is going to be caught at the 36-yard line. Great catch by number 10. I think right now, I, I think right now that all we need is an interception. Truly, because um, at this point, like this, at this field position, we can certainly run it in. As fast as they've been scoring, they've been scoring under t every time they've had the ball, they've scored under two minutes, so they got plenty of time. And this is going to be a false start against Pulaski Academy. It will be a snap infraction against the center. He moved the ball before. He moved the ball and set it back down and then tried to snap it again. So that will be a five-yard penalty, and they will replay first down. And they get a play call in from the sideline, reversing field. And here's the snap. He's looking down the field, runs a button hook to number seven, who breaks the tackle and then gets knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line by number 14, Jalen McDaniel. Two minutes, 11 seconds left in the first half. So it will now be second and four for the Bruins after that gain of 11. Takes the snap, fakes the screen. He's going to have nobody in the middle. And he easily gets the first down yardage on that play. The clock stops while the chains reset. And the clock is now again started. So it, there is, are two minutes left in the first half. They are making some substitutions. Still getting the play call in from the sideline. And he takes the snap, hands it off to number 23, who tries to get around the outside and isn't able to get the eye on the outside, but is able to cut up into a hole for a gain of four. Wynn had a blitz coming around the outside, and they ran past him. They had run up too far up the field, and he was able to cut inside the blitz. So it'll be second and seven for the Bruins. And he takes the snap, looking down the field, being rushed from behind. And he has a wide open receiver, number seven, who gets all the way down to the 32 yard line, enough for a first down Bruins. You know, uh, Roy likes really big, he's good at blocking and tackling and such, but he's not very good to have uh, covering somebody, especially whenever they're a little fast, because although his size does not equal speed, but he can certainly anchor a D-line. And here's the snap, he's looking down the field, and he throws it deep to number 10, who's going to be wide open in the end zone for a touchdown Bruins. Call a timeout. You know, all I can think right now with a, if, by it being a minute and four seconds left in the first half is we defer to the second half and we're known to be a second and half team, especially. Spirit, the mascot, Kevin Carr. With many on his phone, the deep front. Uh, walk into Centennial yeah, that's one of the good things about being able to recover the ball at the second half. Um, you know that you're going to have first possession and. I mean, think about it. For our seniors, 
they're thinking I only have one more half a football to play in my whole career. And I mean, those those that are going to college, I mean, they certainly have other times that they'll play. But a lot of these boys aren't going for college. They're this is what they did, like so that they could have friends and be part of something. You know, there's nothing like high school football. Nothing. And I, uh, I have nothing friends. like small town high school football. Yeah. I have friends who's, uh, who's in college football, and there's like the feeling's not the same. You don't get that one-on-one -on -one love. And you get that one-on-one -on -one attention like you do in high school. You're a lot closer with your uh, coaches, especially in high school, because think you've grown up. They've seen you grown up. The kick is up, and it is good. So with one minute and four seconds left in the first half of the state championship game, PA is winning 28 to 14. And PA again will probably come out and try kicking onside kick, so we really need to recover it. Because we cannot let them score again before halftime. <laughs> no, that'd just be a little bit too much for my taste. It's like if I was the PA coach, this would be the very, one of the very few times I would kick it deep to make it very hard on the wind to score because if they get the ball here at the only 50 yard line, they do have a chance to go down and score. But I highly doubt he does that. Just because they are so good at the onside kick. Now, are, are onside kick and squib kick the same? No. An onside kick, you're trying to kick it 10 yards and get a perfect bounce so your team can recover it. A squib kick, you're kicking it down the field. But it's still it's not a high kick. See right see what they did right there. And number three, Zach Morris falls on top of it at the twenty eight yard line. That is a script kick. Okay. It's a very strong kick. It was hard to recover. That took three seconds off the clock. Yeah, that's exact kinda, you know, lost control for a minute because it was that was a pretty hard kick. I hope I kinda almost say it hurt too, I mean getting pegged with one of those. And here comes the Yellow Jacket offense taking over at their own 29-yard line. They have one minute and one second to try and cut the lead down to, to try and cut the lead down, period. I'll take a field goal right here if we could get one. Ross takes a snap, hands off number 26, Jamar, who has a massive hole, makes a couple men miss, and goes down for a first down all the way to the 41-yard line. Clock stops as they reset the chains. Wind moving fast right here. And the offense is set. The clock is again moving. Takes the snap. Again, hands off number 26, Jamar, who's hit at the line of scrimmage and then falls forward for a gain of three. He didn't stop the clock. Uh, we only have one timeout left, so he does not want to waste it in case he does is able to get down to field goal range. Well, I'm saying that the time, or never mind, I forgot to say. And Ross takes the snap, looking at number 27, Devontae Pounds, who's going to be wrapped up in tackle at the 50-yard line, 20 seconds left in the first half. The ball is spotted, and Wynn calls a timeout, their last timeout of the half. Oh, 15 seconds. Yeah, I'm sure they can do a lot. I, I vision a long pass. <laughs> I would hope so. Like a Hail Mary kind of pass. Or just Jamar Dixon gets a wide open field. <laughs> yes. That would certainly be um, what I would go for, but then what do I know? I kind of like to see what PA ran the first uh, play of the game where they ran the button hook lateral. Yeah, but I don't know if we if we've done that. I'm sure we practiced it at least once. Well, I'd like something may, that's more of a... May have been a while, but I'm sure we practiced it at least once. Is that because they are going to be expecting a deep pass right here or something along those lines. It's third and one for the Yellow Jackets. It's 15 seconds left in the first half. And he takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Jamar, gets forward for the first down. So the clock will stop. So they spot the clock. Nine seconds left in the half. And looks like that is going to be 
And here is the play. The clock is starting with seven seconds left. Ross going to take the snap, looking down the field, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield, and that will be the end of the first half. Pass though, because we had number four. Is that number four? No, that's number three. Zach Morris in that deep, deep field. And we're sending in our boys to their locker rooms for halftime. Score is 28 14, PA up. We will be back after halftime. 